right, people, I'm going to be showing you, or maybe even just providing you with the code for and, and showing you uh, how to create an NPC teleportation script that is combat-based and dynamic. So, for instance, um, just to give you an example, if you look at a lot of the teleportation in Skyrim, it's actually using X markers and predefined locations. Um, but, you know, th thankfully, we have enough uh, data or are allowed enough access to certain functions within pa Papyrus to, uh, well, provide ourselves with a dynamic way of teleportation and uh, just moving around uh, objects in a floating point vector space. So, I'm actually going to assume that uh, some of you guys are uh, completely new to this, so I'm just going to show you exactly what to do right before, uh, just to get to where I am at. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do once you start up Creation Kit is go to Data and uh, double click this Skyrim ESM is really the only one that you actually need to click. And I'm assuming you're not going to initially have a plugin file that stores your work. Uh, but what you do is just save it. You know, once you load up Skyrim, you're going to save it once you have your work and everything. But the first thing after that you want to do is go to Actors. Maybe it's not extended or anything and it's like this. Well, uh, extend Actors and then extend Actor again. And here you're going to right click and select new. This is on the window and you're going to select new. This is to create a new NPC. I'm assuming that you do not have an NPC ready. Um, so this is the idea and it's um, more of a something for developer based or developer side rather. Uh, so just name a unique name that you can remember, uh, preferably something that starts with, well, whatever you're working with as your uh, project, right? Um, so uh, I'm just going to put generic because this isn't, I'm not going to actually press OK on this. Um, this isn't really important for what exactly we're having, uh, but you probably want to select unique anyway, maybe essential if, if you uh, make a level one character or something like that. None of this really is important as of yet, uh, except this. Uh, you have to ma make sure you select a race that is actually playable, um, or a race that, that has combat features, rather, uh, human combat features. Uh, none of this is really important for what we're looking at doing. Um, and of course, you know, you have all these tabs, basically, if you don't know what they are, you, they just are properties of the characters, and or your character that you're making, the NPC. Uh, you might want to, if you're going to test it in combat, <laughs> put the level up like 50 or something and select auto-calculate. Um, once you have that done, go ahead and uh, press OK. And that'll actually pop up. Um, here we go. Okay, so once you have your NPC and it's on this list, what you're going to want to do is go to this dialog box right here called Cell View. And what this is, is just basically a list of all the cells loaded, or the maps, if you will. So I went ahead and went to Rift and BN Barb. Just double click on a cell, and it'll load in the render window. Once you have your cell that you want to put your NPC in, go ahead and simply click on the NPC you want, and uh, drag him over, okay, and this will put him in there. And that's all you need to do, and uh, you know, after you save, He's going to uh, be in there with everybody else, but I'm not going. Let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. Now, if you don't know, uh, basically what this is is a papyrus fragment. You're going to click add here, and what this does is it basically attaches scripts to um, NPCs or to whatever you're working with. Since I already have mine, uh, I'm not going to select new, but you would want to select new. And uh, this is your the name for your your script. You know, put whatever unique name you want there, and it's going to remain extending object reference because uh, we need some of the data that is in that to actually you know make this work easier. Um, so once you have that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my uh, character that I already made. 
that has that. Uh, once you select, you know, new script and all, add it, it should be here. Now we get into the scripting part. If you do not know how to code or anything like that, it's not a big deal because I have the code pasted. If you go to the link below in on the description and it'll be all there. Uh, but I'm just going to show you exactly what happens. Uh, and nobody likes to use I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend using the uh, general text box like this because it's kind of silly uh, I, I would use notepad plus but anyway okay here we go so this is the, the magic of it all this is the script that uh, we just added that uh, controls the teleportation system so forget about uh, this let me just highlight the functions that actually are important this is sequence based which is uh, just something else so that that isn't really important but let me just walk you through it um, and if like I said if you do not know how to code or this is new to you or anything like that, that that doesn't matter because I'm gonna show you what exactly you want to modify anyway and it's it's gonna be simple for you so the event we're looking for right now is on hit I think that's the simplest way especially if it's combat based uh, you know to to trigger something so of course I'm gonna have uh, the on hit with the um, n none of these parameters really really matter once the arguments are passed except for the aggressor so this is what happens um, first of all, I'm going to take a uh, random float. This is just because, I mean, sometimes I, I don't want it to trigger every single time. And there's no real way to grab AI behavior functions directly because everybody knows that <laughs> Papyrus is basically the bastard child of maybe Visual Basic and Action Script or something weird like that. Um, anyway. Okay, so just keep in mind that a lot of these things like the, the green, the commented out things are specialized parts of the script that you probably don't really need like a global variable or something. So those are commented out. But if you're new to scripting or you don't know how to code or programming or whatever, then you're going to want to uh, do control F on your notepad or whatever you're using and find 768. Why? Because this is the number that basically uh, checks the whole thing to see if you can pass and go and go ahead and teleport what this does is simply checks the distance between the enemy and the NPC so if the NPC is at a distance greater than 768 units it's going to go ahead and teleport now you you, you can change that if you want I find it's actually pretty pr pragmatic with regards to ranged combat uh, and you wouldn't really want uh, a, an NPC to teleport if he's being hit by melee because that, that's just going to teleport him right to the, the spot that he, he's at anyway. So uh, that directly leads us to the, te the combat teleport function, which is actually wh where all the magic happens. Uh, I needed to save th this vector because it's sort of a fail-safe I mean, there's no secret. It's no secret that some of these maps, you know, uh, for whatever reason, people, NPCs, whether they're dead or not, fall through them. I've, we've all seen the bugs uh, regarding that. So th that's just a fail safe. What it's going to do is, uh, in a few seconds after it teleports, it's going to make sure that it, it's not in a, at a ridiculous distance away from the designated spot. So we're going to actually need. Um, trigonometric equations for this really simple though but why are we gonna think well I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to those really quickly we're gonna need to convert rectangular to polar Y because we do not want our NPC to uh, teleport directly on top of the uh, guy we I, I actually prefer that the NPC teleports a little bit a uh, few units away from the enemy why because um, First, first of all, the AI sort of handles it better that way anyway. And if you're right on top of him and, and he's moving, of course, it's, it's going to be awkward. It, it won't, you know, break or anything, but it'll just seem rather awkward. And it also gives them a sort of a head start to attack the enemy from behind, mind you. 
Uh, so this is just a conversion from uh, rectangular to polar on the x and y values of the vector. Okay, that's why we need that. So the second thing you might want to look at if you don't know how to code, this is what you're going to want to do is control F and find FDIR, okay, or uh, the number 64. And you're going to be directed to this, these two uh, calls to the functions. And this is just our, our polar, our rectangular to polar calculation. And uh, basically what this does is if you look at the unit circle, and uh, we have also a an important function here called get heading value. So what happens is if you have a point A and you are at point B, B is your, um, that's your NPC. What happens is you, you get the distance from here and this is where he's facing. Well, it's gonna return this value. Uh, for some reason, this is actually positive 45 degrees instead of negative, for instance, um, in the Havoc engine. But that's the value it's going to return. Now this is important because we don't want our NPC to be facing in front of where the enemy is facing, and that's why I have a checker for that. But also what it's going to do is it's going to have a distance uh, as designated by our calculation here, and this distance is uh, initially 64. That's the number we have here, and this is the get heading value. So uh, those are the two things you might want to modify. You can make the fdir a constant. I don't. I don't see why that's necessary though, because that's just going to place him in the same, same uh, location over and over. Um, so he might be facing the enemy. He might not. But this is the radius. So if you want to modify that, you can. I wouldn't put anything more than maybe 128 units because that's just going to teleport him far away from the the enemy and I mean that sort of kills the, the so what happens in our case is we are going to get through a function uh, that's already implemented there we're going to get an angle here and uh, and this is a polar coordinate plane anything between 45 and negative 45 degrees will um, result in a return of that degree plus 180 so it, it'll in fact make sure that you know we're, we're teleporting around to this point instead of uh, this point so that I'll make sure that uh, it'll never teleport in front of the target okay so uh, we covered all that we cover, covered basically how it works and the the simpler uh, things are just setting the position of it which is actually rather easy um, once we have those calculations, we just put them into our set position function. And we're just going to want to set the uh, z value in this vector to, well, uh, the z value of the enemy. Because, I mean, it, you might want to add an offset maybe if, if the collision is weird, but I, I, I never had to. So we're just going to leave it like that. And uh, important is the set angle. Uh, function because we want him to face the enemy after you know set position is, is uh, called because we don't want him to be facing away from the enemy uh, which will probably you know offset the the behavior of the AI but um, here are a few other things you want to look at if you don't know or are new to this um, the, I'm using this uh, activator this is basically the effect that that is uh, summoned or spawned um, when he teleports but you might want to use these that are already made for you so in invis is the one that um, tell that's you know starts at the starting point and outvis is obviously the one that that uh, ends at the ending point and to modify those all you have to do is go to um, and let me save this real quickly. You need to go to your properties and in your properties if you don't have maybe an effect in mind a, a basic effect would be the where is it the summon target effects activator which is basically the the normal teleportation effect that everybody uses. Uh, so that that's that and 
I, I should go over exactly what you need here. Um, you don't need that. Um, I did mention, I didn't mention that, did I? The dragon race is, is uh, I, I implemented that because we don't want our NPC to teleport in the air if a dragon is attacking him and he somehow ends up teleporting in the air. So it, this this doesn't work with dragons. You can take that out if you want, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll just, you know, die or, or uh, go to bleed out state if, if you, you try to teleport him in the air. Um, and that's pretty much it. All these... You don't you don't need the boolean modified you don't need the actor owner modified that's actually something that i was uh, using before i'm i believe so uh well you might need this in case that uh, you want to access the values of your own um actor because you know in certain cases you can't cast uh the object reference script doesn't doesn't uh grab the values of of the Thing it's attached to necessarily in, in certain cases so you, even in typecasting you, you can't you know grab those so that's why you might want to have this and, and just put this as your um, actor if you are a sculptor at least give me a little bit of credit for putting this up here or at least give me some credit for putting this face here I don't actually know how that got here or how I successfully compiled with that there but uh, thanks for watching and that's it if you have any questions about the script. Lord Frostbot will never fall.